All right, Elijah Tua back here with mission number eight, and it's the pits. We've got another scary, scary necromancer with a spell immune veil, and we're gonna have to slowly take him down. So let's uh, let's j jump to it. It's a nice thing here. We've got this uh, footman, and he's got a sword waiting for him that we can equip for free. So we do that to turn some cards for next turn. And I think that's it. So Merax is a ranged necromancer, so we want to stay far away from him as possible. And if I remember correctly, if we stay far away from him, he's actually going to leave us alone for a while. So we might be able to take advantage of that. Unfortunately, these cards are pretty garbage. Um, and it's not getting any better. I really don't want to use this armor on this footman. It's just not that useful, but I'm not sure I'm going to be given a choice. I can't swap any more cards this turn. So what I am going to do is um, I need to spend one of these. So let me, let me poke him. It's not really efficient, but I need to draw some more cards next turn. And I'm going to put the armor on him so I can at least draw two. Uh, it's not worth putting uncoordinated on him. Oh, he's got poison. Oh, that's really obnoxious. So these chamber pots are the same as the little spiders. If they attack you, they're going to poison your units. So I want to stay away from him, and I'm hoping that I'm going to draw an archer so that I can take him out without being able to be counterattacked. It uh, doesn't look like that actually happened, though. So instead, what we'll do here is we'll take advantage of a little synergy here. And notice that we're careful to attack with the, the Rook. Um, we want this guy to gain an attack. So if he only gains an attack when an ally hero is healed, not him. So we need to attack with the Rook and not the Tongue Bucket. And now we can heal the Rook back up. Normally just healing one damage isn't worth it. But when we're giving our Tongue Bucket a buff, it is an especially... In this case, um, we need to build up a big army so that we can go attack this boss. So we did finally draw a bow unit, better late than never. Um, I want to do this correctly though. So I'm gonna buff our knight here, give him one attack, so he can KO this person in one hit. And then we'll play our uh, play our archer. Oh, behold, phantom power! It's actually not that impressive. So I'm gonna play this bow. Honestly, we're just looking for our terminus. We're hoping that we're gonna draw our terminus in the deck. That's really all we're doing right now. The nice thing is that we are. Um, this guy has two armor. And I think we've got enough guys out on the board now that we can start uh, closing in on Marax here. Now, I, I want to lure him out a little bit. And unfortunately, Marax has the chain attack. So I don't want to put anybody within two squares of these guys because otherwise he's going to start hitting multiple units. I just want to lure him up a little bit. So I don't want to move this archer forward or any any of these guys forward, really. Um, and now I've got five units on the board, so I need him to kill something in order for me to be able to play more units. So it's okay that we're going to lose some guys here, and we are going to lose some guys here. So our poor footman with the, with the armor got taken down, but now at least we can... Uh, start getting some damage in, even if it's just a little bit onto this guy. Unfortunately, we can't play any more units yet because I can't stomp my own footman. Play fifth one. Oh boy, we have a bunch of chamber pots on the board now, so that's obnoxious. And 
he's probably going to be able to take out my tongue bucket if he chooses. Jeez. Look at all these cards coming out. Oh my goodness. All these cards. So painful. So that attack was not particularly successful uh, by me, but we can always give it another go. I don't think that this uncoordinate is going to be that useful. What I really want is I want to be able to like trade this wolf for one of these tongue buckets and just kind of get him out of here. Um, oh, and I can't play any more guys. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. This is just not that useful. It's not that useful. That was really inefficient by me, but I just wanted to get rid of that card. Um, and I had some mana that I needed to spend before the end of the turn. So that's all that was. And we're going to have to redouble our efforts, it looks like. Maybe wait for that... Uh, wait for that Terminus. That was nice of him to clear off his own skeleton there and accomplish virtually nothing with um, that tongue bucket. And now I can actually buff up this archer to three attack. So that's real nice. So now we're trying to retain our units a little bit. And we just want to keep all our units far away enough from the archer so that we're not going to get chained by his ranged attack. Where's my, where's my weapon? Where's my weapon? Maybe I don't have any weapons left in my deck. Wow, that's, that's not cool. I'm, I'm upset. <laughs> The only reason I played that guy was to get a weapon, and I didn't even get a weapon. Man. All right, well, this is still not going amazingly. So I think I'm just going to sacrifice this uh, quartermaster here. We're still... Okay, that's a good card to draw. Um, we can't really do anything with it this turn, but we might be able to next turn. So what I'm hoping is that he's going to leave my archer alone. You could kill him, but then he's going to open up his Merax boss to a bunch of retaliation from these other units in the area. Yeah, so that's what I was hoping. I was hoping he would take out him. Kind of waste his attack. He's going to spend a bunch of removal cards on units that aren't very strong. So that's great. That's all fine and dandy. And now we have Baldrick. And Baldrick has two armor. So all else equal, he should be able to do much permanent damage to Baldrick because he'll only bring his armor down, but he won't be able to penetrate it. We'll see whether that actually holds true in practice. And I can't, unfortunately, I can't. I don't have mana to take out this chamber pot. But the chamber pot is too far away from everything to do any damage, so it's not that big a deal. So, so that was fine. So you see, he took he did two damage to Baldrick, but Baldrick has two armor, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't want to get too far in front, though. I don't want to put him too far in front, because then he could spawn a bunch of units on his turn and take out Baldrick. And I'm really relying on Baldrick 
a lot to hold things down and hold the fort down until I draw um, my terminus. So I'm just going to move Baldrick out of the way there so he can't chain onto this back archer here. Fortunately, it looks like this front archer is going to go down. But uh, I've got him halfway down. So uh, I wouldn't call it a total loss. And, oh, there's Terminus. There's Terminus. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Okay, so let's take advantage of the aura. And we'll take down this chamber pot. And then we can move Baldrick right here. Right up in his face. And now Terminus is online. And we're going to end this thing real soon. Yeah, he's got nothing against Terminus. So Merix has two attack, and he's a little scary, but um, at the same time, if he can't KO your units, and you can get into melee range, it's going to be real bad for him. And so now, with the benefit of the sword power, we can just win. Yeah, he played that perfectly, but I played it perfectly, too. And with that, we move on to round nine. See you next time.